Our Town, Dorothy Thompson speaking to you today from the drive through area of our sponsor, the Richland County Bank, and the topic of our show, maybe you have read this book. of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Well, give me a book and you may not see me for a while, but on the show, we will go to the Copper Top Theater and find out about preparations for sets, costumes, makeup from the cast and crew of this play. Hi, we're out here working on the set for The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Part of this is going to be the witch's castle, and we're taking the castle that uh, Greg Schmidt made for us from St. Joan and trying to piece it back together. And then the idea is we're going to fly it. We're going to put cables on it and fly it up in the air and back so we can bring it in and bring it out when we need it. So that was a year ago this week we would have been on the stage here talking about the set. Correct, exactly. Oh. Yep. I am Cam. I'm playing Mr. Beaver. You're Cam. And you've been uh, in a couple other plays. Oh, several. Yeah, like 15 or 20. <laughs> At last count, I think in my life I've been in 37 plays. 37. Something like that. Going back to 1986 when I was 10 and I was in The King and I Unbearable. The residuals just pouring in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm independently wealthy, you know. I no, um, kind of knew that. But. So you, in this production, you are who? Mr. Beaver. Okay. And uh, I kind of am a little bit of uh, exposition person. I'm the one who tells the four Pevensey children, kind of me and Mrs. Beaver. Uh, we tell the four Pevensey children about the, you know, about that it's always winter and never Christmas, and that. You know, the white witch's spies are all around, and you know, all the crazy exposition that somebody has to do. So exposition would be one of the first things in a play, so the audience knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, I'd say we, uh, Lucy comes alone for a couple minutes, then it's Lucy and Edmund, and then all four children, and right shortly after they arrive, I meet up with the kids, take them back to the beaver den with uh, Mrs. Beaver, and that's when we drop all this crazy stuff about the witch's curse and about the prophecy and that they are the prophecy and all that stuff. So your costume would be a beaver costume. Right, right. Um, though I think we're <laughs> contemplating but haven't totally decided on the beavers being pseudo lumberjack. So like, oh yeah, I so it. like red flannel, yep. that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if anything's set in stone so on that. So you're kind but. of in the same neck of the woods. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no pun, of course, with the beavers. Yeah. Maybe Mike should do it. No, I meant we I need two I'm, sets of hands. You can use a tape measure. Oh. Okay, Mike, that's fine. No, uh, I'm legit not good at numbers. But, but the numbers are written on it for you. <laughs> you don't have to be good at it. I'm also like a calculator. I'm not good at following directions either, Brandon. Lumberjack thing, which I really like. So we've got this put aside for, for Cam and I and she's doing the head. Mm -hmm. This would be the skirt. I have two aprons, one for after, when we're doing the festival thing, so it's lighter <coughs> colored. And then we have the um, flannel shirts, and there's for Cam somewhere, oh, here are the overalls for Cam. Mm. What are you doing now? 
Uh, right now, I am making what's called a line set schedule. It is uh, basically a document that tells us where, in relation to the stage, all of the the pipes that we move in and out for lighting and set pieces live, okay. uh, how high they live, and where they're going to land uh, for the actual construction of the set. So for instance, right now, if you can see over here, we're putting together a facade for uh, the witch's castle. Um, and what we need to do is compare the total height of that against the total height of the line sets so we know exactly where we can hang it, where we can fly it up and down to be out of sight from, from the audiences. So this will help with all that. It'll also help Zach and Talina, our stage managers, uh, know exactly which of these uh, to use to bring in various pieces of the set and lights throughout the show. What program is that? This is just uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I'm putting together. Okay. So I'm, I'm labeling all of these, getting their trim height, And then we'll have a description of what is on them. And then once this is done, it'll be printed out, hung on the back of the arbor here for the stage managers, and they'll be able to use it to reference which of these they're going to need to use during the show. Sounds very overly thorough. Uh, being overly thorough at this stage is kind of what we shoot for. The more organized you are at the beginning, uh, the smoother things tend to run once you actually hit showtime. These can get confusing, especially uh, for people to run who aren't used to the space, used to the theater, used to the rigging. So when they have a reference sheet out in front of them, when I have one in front of me, it makes it very, very easy and quick for me to, me or the stage manager, to call instructions down to say, stage, we need to pull in the line set. All right, sounds like we're good. Yep, we're gonna hang that off ninth. Go ahead and start assembling the first part of the facade, you guys, and right. check in with me before you attach it to the back. All right. Go up stage, Um, many of you have worked on a stage crew before, some of you haven't, that's okay. We're going to be bringing pipes in, up and down, above your heads. When that happens, I'll call and I'll try to look on stage and call you by name. But watch out for everyone. If you see set pieces moving on or off stage, up or down, out of the air, keep your eye on everyone around you. Make sure that everyone is safe. If anything needs to happen, if you see someone in the way, someone in danger, yell stop. If anyone hears stop, everyone stop what you're doing. Uh, as a general rule, if you see something falling, call heads. Everyone knows that that means something is coming down on top of their heads and to get out of the way. When you are taking a big piece, like we're going to be moving some flats in and out uh, from the outside there on here, or from the shop on the stage, if you're coming out around a blind corner, just yell corner so people who might be working there don't get clobbered. If you have any questions, come to me, Zach or Talina. Talina, if you and Zach have any questions, come to me. I'll just give a quick refresher just in case anyone does it. Stage directions, if you call stage left, stage right. If you are an actor on stage facing the audience, stage left, stage right is your left and right. Towards Cam is stage left. Towards the arbor over there is stage right. If you're in the house facing this, that's called house directions. If you say house left, house right. The left from the audience is house left. The right from the audience is house right, okay? So stage left, stage right. If you're confused, just look out at the audience and then go left or right. It's a sledding hill, upstage and downstage. Always think of that, going back towards the audience. The top of the hill is up, the bottom of the hill is the audience. Upstage is that way, downstage is that way. Everybody happy? Cool? Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh. Was that down here or over there? You're fine. It's not, it's uh, it's armor heavy, it's not pipe heavy, it's not gonna fall on you. No, I'm not worried about falling on me, I'm worried about anything. This is just plain green satin. Mm -hmm. And then I found this, which is beautiful. Yeah, that looks excellent. Mm -hmm. That would be for the Dryad. The dryad is the tree goddess. Okay, dryad is green. Well, okay. then it stops here at the waist. Oh, God. Yep. 
So we'll have to do something. That's to make a lot of noise backstage. Mm-hmm. My, I don't know. Especially on a small but, child. But is it going to look... Uh, Can we just take the wings off? They're just sewed on. I don't see why not. This one was the material. Oh, yeah. I like the material on the pants. I know you have other I already have that on my list. We can okay. make it in various you. ways. Then we can Velcro it together. Mm -hmm. When I was a Tin Woodman, this is how I made my costume. Okay. So I know it can be done. Mm -hmm. um, so are you and, thinking like a, a chest piece and a bottom piece that right. we Velcro? And, and, then, and then arm pieces Do you think for her. It or and then we would paint, paint it. it exactly. Okay, brown. Well, yeah, with try different and, try textures and yeah, colors, yeah. a bark color. And, like her, and then for her head, we could even use another piece mm -hmm. and Velcro it together and then cut the face up. And have her be a tall and then add the branches to the top. Yeah, potentially. She yeah. Talked I, I about guess I was thinking branches, of, so, yeah. I guess I was thinking of a deciduous tree and not a pine but tree. But then we'll have to have bare branches no, no, because I mean, it's either or, and it's cold. Yeah. Say what? Either or. If we do, We're all if saying we, it could be either or. We're if you do the deciduous, then you got to have bare branches because it's Narnia and it's winter time. They're, they're the suggestion of branches, but they're filled in. So you know, 19. I just say so seven, if you want some break behind you. 20. Right? Eight well, let's, let's find out. Talina, could I have your report stage right when you're available, please? Who? Talina. I want to know how much fly space we have. That's here. what I'm actually working on for you right now. Um, we're going to take all our measurements. We're going to do this right, right for the final show. I don't necessarily like the pant themselves. I like the material on the pant. Doesn't look a lot like fur. Well, it'd be like him wearing pelts. Hides, yeah. So Hides from it could fruit. potentially, to give depth to my costume, it could potentially be something to add on to over fur. You know what I mean? Because let me well, you know, if that's what you want, I yeah. guess that's okay. Would it be more ideal to put brick behind these arches? Because in the original See, thing, we just had. You're so good. I love you. So Would that make it more stable and easier to fly? Yeah. Oh, we need some sort of frame on the back of it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, they can have available. the have the carpenters brace it however they can. How? You've got rigging gear right behind you there. We're just going to hang eye bolts from it oh. and just dead hang it off whatever manual we determine. How is this going to be put on stage? Because I have an idea. This is going to this is oh, going to fly. Hanging. This is going to fly. Yep. Am we're going to rig this. That's why we're doing this because I need our I need our line to get for this. Um, my wife has also volunteered. Um, she does art therapy, so she can paint. Um, my ex-wife uh, actually has a degree in fine arts, and she's going to do the portrait of Mr. Tumnus for us that hangs over. Mm -hmm. And we've got to take pictures of Mr. Tumnus today. I hope Zach is still here. Let me continue showing. It's, it's, it's a very glam Mr. Tumnus. This would not be the whole, this is no. Did you show him your video? I'm getting there. Hi. Um, are you doing anything with makeup? No, okay. Um, if you see Zach before I do in our running around, uh, uh, some of the folks in the back wanted to get some makeup instruction from him. And you are Noah, I believe. Yes, sir. And what are you doing with that light um, ring? I'm just uh, making sure it's ready to go for the picture for the Narnian folk and all the Narnian creatures. Okay. We are going, this is a circle ring light. People use them at home for like on um, just Zoom videos and stuff. They use it to light up the stuff. Um, just light up themselves as they're doing a video. But um, yes, I'm going to use this and then I'm going to have them sit down like this sort of and I'm going to try to take a picture of them. Just their face. Just the upper body and face, so then we can send it out and put on the. I think Andrew's gonna put on the website who like who everyone is and yeah. like who the creatures are and yeah. stuff. And yeah. So yeah, I'm Noah Van High and I'm the photographer for this for this show. So. And I noticed there's different light temperatures. I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you run through those a little bit? Mm -hmm. I can. Yes. Yeah. So, so right have, now is this is just white. Right. This is white, and then this would be an orangish, more of a warmer color. Yep. And then this is sort of the cold blue, more whitish bluish color. And I maybe will use this color for the witch, the witch's yep. army and such, that but I'm sense. not sure about that though, but yeah. Okay, so you have the kind of an amber, you have a cooler color, warm, cool, and neutral? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stand by going dark on stage. Stand by going dark on stage. Okay, that's all I need to know, thanks. Yeah, no problem. A lot like cooking, really. Yeah. 
hard to aspect ratio is destroying my will right now second number 66 third number 65 next 64 65 6 6 12 12 11 11 13 13 thank you is that the end of second electric Nope, there's one more. 13. Thank you. Stand by. Copy. And I'm who is this? This is I'm Talina. Talina. <laughs> I'm Talina Sprecher. I'm stage manager for... Oh, Sprecher. Your mother yeah. and your... But your somebody was in tons of plays for years. Yep. I've been in quite a few. This is my first time as stage manager, so I'm, I've done a lot of acting, though. What have you been in? Uh, most recently, I was in Cam's production. Um, Murder at Coppersmith oh, Inn. Oh, yes, yes. And then I was also in the summer musical. I was, um, oh, now I can't remember my character's name. Yeah, for Gilligan. Yeah, I was in that. Yeah, Marianne. That's, you were Marianne? I was Marianne. Well, I, I was in the audience, so I was like 80 yep. feet away. I didn't recognize you. Okay. Yep. Um, here, my last my last play here was uh, the Headless Horseman one. Okay. So, but... Lots of time on the stage, so. Does Brandon yell at you a lot for no oh, reason? Oh no, Brandon loves me. He does? Yes. I do. I'm his favorite. Oh, he heard that, okay. I do. Yeah. Well, thank you and good luck and stuff. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I yell at Zach mostly. I just got these face paints. Um, we're probably going to be using prosthetics for a lot of the people in prosthetics and things like like this, this is a witch face, quite a, a very complete witch face that you would then glue, you know, to someone's face to make them a witch. Um, and there's smaller ones, these are cat faces, small cat nose. But then I got these um, face paints, and I've never done a lot with face paints, so I'm just interested to see um, how well they cover and how they go on. Well, what would you normally use? If you U usually I would use cream makeup, um, which I, I think these are cream makeup more or less, but they have uh, kind of a different composition. They're, they're much brighter. I'm, I'm usually using flesh-colored mm -hmm. um, makeup, and this is... Uh, much much brighter but I'm just interested to see how well it works and it seems to work pretty well yep to look like uh, see if I wanted to be gold if I was perhaps doing Aslan's nose the great lion or now I'm just gonna I'm just playing around so these colors are so bright. Oh, and there I slapped a little bit, but see that that's really red, red. Oh yeah. I really, it's a lot of fun. They're, they're more fun than your standard stage makeup, which is just flesh colored stuff and it's lighter or it's darker. This is, uh, looks like we could have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, take the yellow and the black and, and really make somebody into a tiger, really, really paint their face. And then we would have to set it with powder, um, kind of like old grease paint. Grease paint was made from grease and you had to set it with powder, otherwise it would run all over the place, etc. And so that's uh, more kind of the way these things are. Now I could, now that I'm this far and look this ridiculous, <laughs> I could, uh, I don't want to use that one. I could pull out one more brush here. And, uh, I don't know, I kind of like this kind of magenta-ish, I don't know what 
color you would call that, but it really works quite well. It really carries quite well. Um, now, as so, far as the prosthetics, you met, you saw, you showed the entire witch face, almost her whole face, kind of. Right. Is that? It's it take well. It's it's easier when it's instead of just building a nose and cheeks and eyes. Yeah, yeah. Somebody has built it for you, and um, you know, I won't. They say that these things are professional quality, and and I mean they are. Uh, they're mass-produced professional quality, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But you'd have to have a negative and a positive mold and then inject the stuff in there. It can be done, but it's not for um, the faint of heart. Um, right, yeah. You know, so um, could I do that? Yes. Have I done that? Kind of, yes. But uh, I'd rather just buy it instead of having to make it so mm -hmm. my that? joy is in putting it on and making it look like something not in making it but. yeah so you don't have to fiddle with the individual pieces that, that there's less risk of an individual nose falling off right right yeah it's still well-made stuff and i've used that in the past um you know when we did frankenstein obviously see there is frankenstein's Part of Frankenstein's face is still there. I just haven't thrown it away. I should throw it away. But nostalgia. So. I don't think Dr. Frankenstein threw anything away, though. That's exactly right. Yeah. That was actually a different kind of face. And uh, I'm not even sure. That was his chin. Yeah, I cut the piece up so that it would fit on his face and then he could move his mouth and things like that. So I, I had cut it up. Put that on Lance Maloney. He was a was superb. He the, was it modern Prometheus? That is right, the modern Prometheus. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, right. That's uh, what the story is called now. Yep. So well, I'll leave you to your cleanup. Okay. Thank you, Andrew Sharp. You're you're welcome. Did what is the did you hear the joke about the vegan? No, what's How do you know someone's a vegan? They'll tell you. Oh. <laughs> okay. This has got to be stationary. This half has to be together. Okay. And that half together. So when this breaks, this shouldn't move. You know, this should be heavy enough to stay. And if you don't want it all the way down, we can put a block on the back side on the back and it'll stop at 45 or whatever. Okay. Sam coming behind. All right. So, you know, you down? Nope. Okay. Where about? The one in the middle. Oh, and I'm taking it off. Oh, you're taking it off. That's one of the quarters, one of the lighter. Nobody's in the house at that point. So, okay. there's so stone table said, "Is there a blackout then at the end of page 40 here?" That's up to you and Andrew. We didn't Did he talk not? About why it. didn't he want the intermission here? That would have made so much more sense. Don't know. It's not a me question. I'm okay. the messenger. But it is a blackout. Possibly. I think that would be more ideal. It's a blackout. Okay, we're, we're considering a blackout. So you were asking about those, and then yeah. the pause. Yes. On the the larger, like the more main characters, I was gonna do an actual like paw, like realism, and then claws and stuff like on Aslan and the bear. But with the kids, I was just thinking of doing an uh, foot cover, like with the fur, like a real fur, but having it just kind of covered and then having elastic on the bottom. I think well, here's what I would think. You guys can tell me how you feel about that. So they're at this. Are they at the stone table when this is happening? Like yes. standing in front of it? Yes. All right. So they're they're standing in front of the stone table, and the stone table does have that opening in it, right? Well, no, I don't know. That's in the picture. Not necessarily. So just to wrap up uh, 
the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is guaranteed to be a family-friendly show. Um, children of all ages could come. We're actually aiming for a, a younger audience for the show. Tickets are only five dollars uh, for everyone and so uh, we hope that uh, people will be able to bring the families and uh, come to the show and enjoy a show that's only an hour and a half long or so. Um, the uh, dates are March 31st, April 1st and 2nd, and then April 7th and 8th. You know, this is a Wisconsin thing, well, an up north thing or any place where there's snow. Parking lots this time of year, what's remaining is the snowbergs. Uh, just a reminder that you need to spring forward with your clocks this weekend. St. Patrick's Day is coming and the uh, Spring Love of Learning lectures are starting.